So good evening, everyone. This is Debbie Lakin from Kids Around Dogs. And it's our author evening. So we're going to chat with um, an author that is part of our CAD library. And uh, she's quite special to me because she's a friend as well as a colleague, as well as a CAD Pro professional. Um, and we had a lovely dinner in Coventry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the lovely, lovely to Williamson. <laughs> Lovely to be on again, Debbie. Thank you for inviting me. See you. <laughs> and uh, Sue and I also, we, we rub shoulders with celebrities, don't we? Yes. <laughs> when we were, even if you uh, want it. <laughs> yeah, even, exactly, even when they don't, especially when they don't want to. <laughs> um, a craft, we met the lovely Sally Phillips from um, Bridget Jones Diaries and... Uh, Miranda. Uh, she's, she's in Miranda as well, isn't she? Miranda, oh gosh, yeah, of course. Oh, she's been in the list. I, I recently uh, watched a, a bit of an old program called um, Trolleys, I think. Uh, she was in there as well. And she thought, I was like, oh my God. Hello, <laughs> 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 Oh my God. <laughs> so obviously. Uh, but it was quite funny because being at the stand with you and you've been, you, I've been authored uh, now three books. It was quite funny because you had fans coming to see. Can <laughs> that, I that was really weird. That was, oh my gosh, <laughs> I know her. <laughs> so yeah, funny. that, that, that was, was a bit surreal. I didn't expect that. <laughs> it was, it was so lovely to see and uh, in general to see how surprised you looked as well. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh. So, so nice. Um, so thank you for that, because you brought some, some, you know, celebrities who are, are stand there. Thank you. <laughs> but I mentioned that you authored a, a few books now. So before we're going to get into that, um, tell us a little bit about your background. So grooming, obviously, being a big part, but what else is you? Yeah. OK, so um... I live in the, the, the East Midlands in Leicestershire. With my, I live with my husband, Paul, and I've got my three dogs, uh, my two poodles, miniature poodles, she can ritzy, and then I've got a working cockatalis. Mm -hmm. um, I am a groomer, but I'm actually a specialist groomer. Well, I call myself a behaviourist groomer because I groom the dogs that really struggle with the grooming process, so find it really difficult. So I work with the dogs and the guardians to find a way to be able to groom their dogs without causing too much distress um so i get referred a lot of dogs that have bitten other groomers so what i do is when they come to my salon i start them completely from scratch even i do animal centered education free work mm -hmm. so they get to know the salon um I don't touch them on the first appointment unless they make it really obviously obvious they want touching. And then I just build up from there. You know, if they're happy then to come to me, I'll give them a stroke. But I won't actually start grooming until I'm confident that they're ready to be groomed. Mm -hmm. And then it might just be, you know, 10 minutes of grooming. And that's it for that day. I've got a, a lovely work, a lovely show cocker that comes to me. And his first appointment with me, he couldn't even look at me without barking. Um, it was able to do the free work but if, if we made eye contact that was just too much for him um that was back I think that was back in February mm -hmm. and now he comes running in jumps on my table uh, he lets me um it took me ages to be able to brush him without feeding him at the same time but now I can brush him without feeding him at the same time but when it comes to doing scissoring he needs some food while I scissor him so it, he's still a work in progress and probably will be a work in progress for a long time mm. but he had uh, he had guardia as a puppy he has resource guarding issues which mm. a lot of dogs with grooming sensitivities also have resource guarding issues right. um so what it, do you think that is I think I think it's the re I think part of it is the, the guard in their own body. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's obviously, we know dogs that are, that resource guard are probably not as confident. They're lacking in confidence. They may have other behavioural issues as well. Um, they may not have come from the best breeders in the world. The best, mm -hmm. might not have had the best socialisation. Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons what, why dogs have resource guarding, but... Um, 
I would say a good majority of the dogs I groom that have got sensitivities to grooming have also got the um, resource guarding issues as well. Mm. So it's 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 part of a bigger picture, really. And obviously, with my background in behaviour, I can also help the guardians with helping to manage the resource guardian as well, yeah. um, whilst they get in touch with another behaviourist. Because a lot of a lot of the people that come to me, they travel probably 30, 40 miles. Yeah, so obviously to get a behaviourist. Yeah. yeah. To get a behaviourist, they, they want somebody close. So I give that support in the background and yeah. get them started off. And then they'll if they think they need it, they'll get in contact with another behaviourist as well. And I'm I'm quite happy to work with those behaviourists as well. I think that's sure. important if you you can help them and liaise with them in a way that helps yeah. the dog and then the guardian and yeah we had one incident earlier it was earlier this year actually one of my other clients um her dog ran under the resource garden and mm -hmm. she got a behaviorist in to help with the resource garden mm -hmm. unfortunately it wasn't a positive based one even though on the website she, it said she was when mm -hmm. it turned out that she actually wasn't and there was lots of going at the dog and squirting water <laughs> at it Oh yes, God. a dog that doesn't like being groomed and yeah, she's squirting water at it. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, they only had one session, but uh, they came to me after they'd had the one session with the behaviorist, and about two weeks later she came to me. Dog was completely different, had made massive we'd made massive progress with her, but we she wouldn't let me stroke her. Mm. I could get near her. So I said, I'm sorry, I can't groom her today. She needs she needs some work doing before I can build her again because her confidence was so low you could when you know dogs really well and you know the individual dogs you can tell straight away whether there's, there's something not right yeah and yeah. I, could, I knew as soon as this dog came in I knew something wasn't quite right so mm -hmm. so what I did there um I referred her we couldn't find a behaviorist that I knew that lived close to her so one of my local behaviorists actually traveled over to hers and helped her oh, because goodness. she wanted she wanted the the guardian wanted somebody I knew and that I could recommend yeah, yeah, yeah. so well, I especially did, after being yes yeah, after and unfortunately yeah. I didn't know any any behaviorists that lived close to her that had had experience with myself so my one of my colleagues and a good friend mm -hmm. she went over and completely changed everything oh. that we're doing <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. And we're back to normal now. We're back to normal with the grooming now. You know, I get that get her done fairly easily and we're all happy oh. again. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about your books then. So yeah. you are uh, your third book and that's uh, uh, the one where we're going to be, be talking about uh, the most. It is called Introducing Your Puppy to Grrr, <laughs> Less <laughs> Grooming. Um, and this is the uh, number three, if you like, it's in a third one. Right? Yeah. So just briefly, uh, the other two, one was specifically for uh, groomers. Yes. For so there's this uh, one, which is taking the grrr out of the grooming salon. So this one's aimed at professional dog groomers. Yeah. And that's whether they work in a salon, at, you know, come into people's homes or work in a mobile van. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one, if you're a groomer, this is the one you need. And that was your first one, wasn't it? As uh, well? uh, no, this one was the first oh, one. Oh, this was for, for taking, guys. Taking yeah. the girl out of grooming your dog. So this is for guardians uh, whose dogs have started to have grooming issues. So the difference between the puppy one and this one, this is really for puppies to start positively from day one. Yeah. This one is probably, I'd say, for dogs six months plus that have had a bit of grooming but don't enjoy it so you're looking for ways to make it easier for them and I tell you having you know not been a, a groomer myself uh they taking the grill out of your your dog is the one that I have used and used the most and although you know I, I must admit I'm not definitely not one of those that is serious and <laughs> on grooming home um maybe you know, more on the lazy side and I just take her <laughs> to the groomer but I still use a lot of your tips there on how to uh, brush them, how to keep them um, good, if you like, between grooming sessions. Yes. Um, so while I, I 
I would not pretend that they can <laughs> that they can cover for the groomer, but at least when they get to the groomer, they're not a complete mess. <laughs> that's it, and, it, and that's that, as groomers, that's all we ask for. That in between grooms, you keep your dog's coat well maintained, mm. so regular brushing, proper brushing as well. Because I think far too uh, frequently, um, guardians just tend to get a brush yeah. and just brush over the top layer. When actually you need to part the fur and then brush from the root outwards yeah. uh, and then go through with a comb afterwards just to make sure you've not left any little mats in there. Yeah. And it is be done as well. And also depends oh, on the God. color of the coat of the dog. If it, like with Winnie, who is a gold retriever, I in particular struggle with be, behind their ears and the tail, like right where the tail comes up and is bushier. That bit is always it tricks me sometimes because <laughs> I feel like oh you feel alright and and because I feel the tail but actually when I really do the thing that you told me to do I'm like oh no that's not the tail that is actually my tail oh my god I'm so yeah. sorry <laughs> they're, they're, they're both really common places to get matted behind their ears um, even my working cocker who's got really silky fur is usually gets tangled around here after mm -hmm. so that's an area I focus on with him and to be honest um most dogs I groom I actually shave that bit behind the, the rear really short yes. because when it when the ears in place you can't see the back of it anyway mm -hmm. and it stops it getting matted in between grooms because a lot of dogs actually don't like the ears being brushed either no I guess yeah, yeah. particularly it's that bit behind the, the skin behind the ear is really sensitive so if you're pulling on a mat behind the ear obviously that's yeah. going to be uncomfortable for them so yeah behind the, the ear that's a common one um and the the, the base of the tail is another one yeah um, that's also called the, the bum area <laughs> <laughs> And again, a lot of dogs don't like having the tail handled. Mm -mm, yeah. So that can be really difficult. It must be um, weird as well. I don't want to do it. Yeah, what are you doing down? What are you doing down there? <laughs> yeah. There's a really good um detangler though that mm -hmm. I use and recommend, and it's called Cowboy Cowboy Magic. You can buy it from Amazon. Yeah. yeah. It is quite expensive. It looks expensive, but because it's like a serum, it's like, you know, something you'd use on your own air. You only put need a little bit on your hand and rub it through the fur. And honestly, if it's only just a, a fresh mat, the, mat, the mats just drop out. Oh, it's really good. Whereas a lot of detangling sprays, you have to spray it on. And we know a lot of dogs don't like being sprayed yeah, at. Yeah, we didn't do um, that. So, and I, I find as well, the ones where you have to spray, you use it really quickly because you're wasting a lot of it because it's going everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but the dog. <laughs> oh, the cat's just just jumped down from the window. So oh it's had to chase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was behind the curtain and I don't think she realised the dogs were up here with me. <laughs> um, yeah, so use cowboy magic. Just pop it on, rub it through with your fingers a little bit, then brush through it. And if if the fresh mats, they'll come out quite easily. Obviously, if you've got a dog that's pelted to the skin, that's, that's not going to do it. That that's a shade yeah. that you need on that. And your uh, latest book is all about the puppies, as you as you showed yeah. us uh, the cover there. Um, I would like to say as well, I love the fact that the four words are by uh, Andy. Oh, Andy. Yes. We both adore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was really nice then oh, great words as well so I, I love that yeah. Andy is uh, such a massive influence to me it's he's it, a he's a great guy he really is yeah he's doing it, so much for our in our field for us yeah human dogs so um, yeah it's the, 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 I knew there was something I knew there was something missing from my teachings and my books and that but I could never really put my finger on it mm -hmm. and then when I heard Andy speak uh, about rethinking the naughty dog it just all fell into place and yeah that's what was missing and it's just the emotional experience yeah, yeah. yeah it's really breaking that down and you know that at the at the end of the day dogs that struggle with grooming are not naughty dogs no, they're just exactly. yeah, yeah. and they're just dogs that are struggling with what you're trying and to do understood. Yeah. yeah and that's that's reflected in the behavior so yes that was the way he puts it was just the missing link 
So thank you, Andy, if you're listening. <laughs> thank you. Look, the, your dog is like, thank you, you can have a shoe. <laughs> and that shoe is for you. <laughs> I love well, that. It's, it's usually a cushion, to be honest. Oh, well, you know, today is a shoe. Oh, it's a croc. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's not a croc, it's a cheap imitation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, sorry, Andy, you can't even have a proper croc. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So you, the, the uh, new book has eight chapters. Um, and one of the things I particularly love is that the second chapter talks about body language and observation, have a look at the emotion, what triggers the dogs to uh, perhaps react or be scared in certain ways. And, you know, I, I love body language is, is what I, I think everyone should, yeah. <laughs> should be like obsessed with it. Um, how important would you say it is to recognize these things in your own dog and how difficult it is as a groomer to recognize these things in another dog because it's not yours and we know that they act differently yeah how, how do you handle that um, I think from my from my own dogs um mm -hmm. Obviously, I want to be able to identify really quickly how they're feeling if they're, if they're anxious. <laughs> yeah, so learning, <laughs> learning their own in particular body language, you know, we know there's the, the common ones, you know, the, the whale eye, the lip licking, but they've also got their own little nuances as well. Um, my the, the poodle I rescued when she was a year old, well, rehome when she was a year old, she didn't actually give much away in her face. Mm. but she would shake off straight after something had happened she she was a big one to shake off mm -hmm. so I picked that up with a really early so yeah. it was really important for me to pay attention to that no you know recognize what she was finding difficult so that I could prevent it happening in the future or help her cope with it a lot better um this one um he's He's a, he's a sensitive boy, um, but again, he doesn't give much away. He's, he doesn't like dogs running into his face, mm -hmm. but he has, if he's going to, if a dog runs into runs up to him, there's a slight freeze. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I don't uh, distract him, then that's the time he's going to go. So it's paying attention to the, the tiniest little detail to prevent issues occurring. She, my poodle, she just lives the life of luxury, sat on my knee. <laughs> I love that. But grooming, in the grooming salon, oh my God, body language is so important, especially the, because I like to pay attention. I mean, we've got the bigger body language, you know, the moving away, um, the, the more oh, yeah. severe ones, you know, like the growling, the lunging, the air snaps. I don't want a dog in the salon getting to that point. If I, if I allow a dog to get to the point where it's having to wear a snap, I've, I've gone too far. So I like to pay attention to the real, really low level calming signals, the really quiet things. So like the lip licking, uh, the whale eye, poor lift. Poor mm. lift is a really common one in the grooming salon. Um, so I'm really paying attention to the dog's body language, particularly around the the face, because that there's so many tails in the face, you know, that closed mouth with a, the hard stare. And so that what I like to do once if they give me a calming signal, it doesn't mean I stop and end the groom, which some people tend to think as soon as they give me any indication that they're anxious, I just stop the groom. I don't. So, for example, if I'm brushing a dog's leg and it starts licking its lips, I move on to its body. Mm. If it carries on licking its lips, then I'll probably just put the brush down and get, you know, just give it a second to just reset itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, if sometimes I've that's, that's all through, they need, just a little bit of it, time. It seems it's just yeah. It doesn't mean that you know it, it's at the end of it all. It's just they just need an extra bit of time rather than being uh, pushed too far if you like I think, that, I think they really appreciate uh actually she's not going to push me more than I need to yeah um and it just it, it, it's just common sense to me obviously I don't want to get bitten yeah so the best way to prevent myself getting bitten is to make sure the dog's calm all the time because yeah. yeah. a calm dog won't bite 
No, and, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't want to get bitten. And also, to be fair, not only it would hurt you, obviously, but if a dog gets to that point, it really is quite stress to get to that point. And, uh, and you've had, or the, the dog has given you signals and has given you opportunity to, to notice, look, I don't like this. So before we get to the bite, we can still work it out that the dog is going to get to that point. So we yeah. don't want, yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, there are some dogs that have learned that you're not going to listen to any of the behaviours, you know, the, 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 you're not going to listen to their little quiet body language. So some of them will go straight for the bite. Yeah. But I found I think the way I work and just break it all down for them and work at that pace, they actually realise they can communicate with me and I'll listen mm -hmm. so they don't have to resort to biting. That, you know, that's another really good point. The fact that like dogs will give you signals, right? To when they get to a certain point. If they have not been listened to before, they'll just go from zero to 10 real quick because yeah. the bite has worked, right? You I bit you, right? You go away, and that has worked. All the signals instead, they were polite way of telling us, you know, bug yeah. off, they have not worked. So what the dog is gonna do, then it's gonna go, well, all those signals didn't work before. I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go straight to the bite because that has proven to be effective. Yeah, to, that's to be a, that's successful. <laughs> yeah, that's and fair enough. It probably would be quite effective. So I'm assuming as well that very often the dogs that come to you have, as you mentioned, bitten before. Yeah. So they might be at that stage where they go, I'm not even going to bother with signals. I'm just going to go and, and give yeah. you the, the, the thing. And that's, that why I, that's why I don't start. Mm right grooming them because you would risk it too much because yeah. if I, I if I if they come from the wrong groomer and come to me and I did groom them exactly the same way as the other groomer did you know and groom them the first time and and just went ahead and groomed I'd, I'd get bitten yeah so yeah. I've got to go right it's it's like peeling all the layers off taking them right back to basics starting them and building them up now sometimes that might mean uh, particularly for dogs like cockapoos and shih tzus, for dogs that need actually clipping off, that might actually mean a sedated vet groom. Right, yeah. So the vet puts them to sleep and shaves them off under a, a general anaesthetic because that's the safest way for the dog to be groomed. Yeah, yeah. And to be quite honest, that's why one of the reasons I've written this book, yeah. because if you start with this book and using this techniques from day one, then you shouldn't get a dog that needs to be sedated because it's fully matted because you'll be brushing it on a regular basis. You'll be keeping it a length you can manage yeah. and everybody's going to be happy. So uh, in fact, that leads to my next question. So actually, even before you take your puppy home, what could we tell uh, breeders out there? How can the breeder already help us to prepare our puppies before we take it home? Oh, it, 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 there's so much breeders can do. Um, Let's just think of maybe of a couple of things that we yeah. <laughs> So Read the book, um, that's one. Yes. <laughs> read the book. Buy the book <laughs> and put the book, buy enough copies for every puppy so every Big puppy book. goes home with one of these. That'd be, that, is, that would actually be awesome to see. Yes, yes, it would, it would be not only from my sales point of view, but also if we can get puppies starting from day one on a positive way then we're going to avoid lots of problems later. So I'd say with breeders, make sure the puppies have been handled with respect and not just every Tom, Dick and Harry coming in and picking the dogs up. Yeah. Uh, because there is an issue as well with uh, picking some dogs up in the salon mm -hmm. because they just don't like it. Yeah, um, yeah gentle handling. Introduce them to um, being strange objects being touched on the body so in the book I've called I've included Andy Hale's stuff training yeah yeah, yeah. so stuff training is just um giving the nervous system via the skin different experiences so you can stroke them with a feather with a paintbrush a sponge screwed up paper your mobile phone your remote control anything you've got anything. to hand a spoon just so they've got lots of different textures and objects get this their um the nervous system used to different things touching them mm -hmm. again doing things like lifting their ears mm -hmm. yes <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And can I just say as well, this is something that even the children can help you with. Always remember, supervise. Yes. Uh, and gently. So say that your child has a doll, for example, they could use like like Barbie's hair for it to to stroke the the dog with the hair of the doll. Yeah. Um, if they have maybe they have a, a new scarf now that is getting cold, so they could just use the scarf to kind of touch gently the dog the dog's body. But remember, always, always supervise. Please, like, <laughs> okay. If, if they've got a favourite teddy bear, they can stroke yeah. the dog with the teddy bear. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's so much, you know, the, the the list of what you can touch with them is endless. But you've also got to be watching the dog's body language while you're touching them to make sure that they're happy being touched. So I think again, I talk about body language in the book. Yes. So. And, and the calming signals so people can start to recognise what their dog enjoys, what they don't enjoy, uh, how to uh, desensitise the things they're not so keen on. Yeah, yeah. yeah in fact, there is, there's one of the, towards the end of the, the book, there is desensitisation as well. But again, in the book, um, I love this, who goes into explaining about canine body language and, you know, help them out with new things. But that is all done is not really overwhelming at all. No, um, really all the things it. that for, yeah, are literally taught for, for people, for just normal uh, dog dog parents, uh, so that, you know, um, it's nothing to be scared of or anything. It's actually quite interesting because you get to, oh, okay, yeah, we are basic things that you can easily learn and also easily recognize in your dog. Once you start observing them, actually, they really like pop out at some point. And yeah. then, is doing the thing that Sue said they would do <laughs> so it's quite yeah it's quite uh it's good but it's absolutely um uh very it, it's so nicely written that it is for everyone to learn so I, I liked that as well um I wanted to ask you another thing because I don't you know I don't want to keep you too long and this is about um uh adolescent um uh puppies because there is also a chapter I think it's ch chapter seven in your yeah. book that you talk about the teenage years, right? And I know that your other book is more like from six months, I think you said, onwards, so the adolescent time. But um, there is a question that sometimes I get asked about in, in dog training. So say that you have a teenage uh, dog, a teenage puppy, or maybe you've rescued a puppy that's already, you know, a few months in. Is it too late to start those things? It is never too late never ever too late um obviously the sooner you start the better but if you've got an eight-year-old dog that's struggling with grooming it's not too old to start yeah teaching it a different way to be groomed mm -hmm. um but yeah the best time to start when the pup is but I think that the, the, what you're sort of trying to get at is you, you might do all yeah, this work. Yeah, we'll go back in here. <laughs> yeah, you do all this work when the pup is, you know, and you get them to the point where they're really confident being brushed and handled, and then they use adolescence and they don't suddenly want to be touched anymore. They don't want to be groomed anymore, and that's the time to not panic. Mm -hmm. That's the time just to go back to basics, do a little bit more stuff training start to build your dog's trust again they mm -hmm. go through so much when they're going through adolescence that you know it's like a, a, a human child you know a, a child yeah. you know when they it's adolescence they get those growing pains oh, God, yeah. Yeah, lots of, <laughs> hormones all over the place mood swings yeah. um the bodies grow at different paces so mm -hmm. they get the growing pains mm -hmm. they can also go through a second fear stage yeah yeah so they can become fearful of something they've never been fearful of before. Mm -hmm. So when they get to adolescence, not just about grooming, it's about everyday behaviour, mm -hmm. being a little bit more thoughtful around them. So it's more, I think whilst they're going through adolescence, it's more important, even more important to pay attention to their body language, yeah. to give them that space if they need it, to really um be there for them as well to be their advocate you know and yeah. and I, you know I, I like the fact that you also mentioned teenage times with with humans um <laughs> this is you know I know I hate, she would hate me if I know if she knew to talk publicly about it but Molly's 11 so she's a preteen and um 
she she is a different child now and in a way is almost as if you need to take a, a step back while understanding that actually she's actually older than before so there's a different is a complete different way of managing things but you need to be mindful that you do need to take a step back that they still need all yeah. the love that you have <laughs> even when they don't <laughs> I know it, it's really <laughs> testing. I've, I've had two teenage boys myself, so I know. You remember <laughs> I know how difficult that time can be. And you know what? I wish I knew then what I know now about emotions and behaviour because I'm sure there was things I did when my sons were younger or going through uh, adolescence that I could have made easier for them. Um, you know, I think we are lucky that we live in the, in the times we're living now where there is more... Uh, understanding or at least we know more about uh, children and we know more about dogs as well um, hopefully what we know now what we are learning from all the studies and everything can help dogs and by spreading the word mm -hmm. can also help uh, other dogs and children to be yeah. a bit more understood and yeah I yeah. think as, as well when they're going your dogs well at any age really just be really careful about what the Facebook groups you're members of yeah. and that you're listening to advice so true. um there's lots of um talk about dominance you know and yeah, as, as you know one of the most common I think I see about adolescence is oh they're uh, they're showing their dominance over you now because they're mature no, they're not. No. They don't want to dominate. Sarah Fisher says very often, dogs don't want to take over the world. No. <laughs> they got other things in their mind, I'm sure. But yeah, they, they just want to, they're just, their behaviour is just a reflection of how they are feeling. That might be in pain, it might be a little bit anxious, it might just be a little bit excited. Yeah, yeah. So it really is, you know, just be careful about the advice you take. Yeah. And as you say, also, where are you asked? Where are you asking for advice? Yeah. And uh, the things that you are asking as well, there are some things, even when it comes to their health, um, you really need to refer back to a vet. You know, it, it's all yeah. great to Google it. Uh, just like when you have a little bit of a headache at night and you Google it, you think, oh my God, I should have been died. I should have been <laughs> dead like three days. How many times have we done that? We all done that all the yeah. time. But uh, be mindful of what you are googling about, <laughs> and what is actually what actually professionals are qualified and yeah. they are meeting your dog or their seeing. Again, don't if I I I would say don't take medical advice off somebody that's not a vet. <laughs> no, it's exactly exactly it's uh, it's one of those. And again, you know, I'm sure we all have done it. You have a symptoms, you yourself, your dogs, whoever, you Google it, don't you? Yeah. How many times have, I don't know, I've had, I said, oh my God, I'm not breathing very well. I said, oh gosh, I should be dead. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, am, I, am, I, am I a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, she just makes herself even worse, don't you? Because she it panicking. Really does, doesn't it? Really does. And the same things for my dogs, especially if it was like a weekend, you, oh, uh, is it okay if I call the emergency? Da, da. And so you, you go and Google things. I should have like a, a dog with three heads. Oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> so everything that all the advice and stuff should always be taken with a pinch of salt and then refer back to a qualified. Yeah, a lot of insurance companies uh, have got help, a medical helpline. So yeah, if you yeah, have got a dog yeah. that's ill that you can't contact your vet, have a look at your insurance policy, your dog's insurance policy yeah, to yeah, see if you've yeah. got medical support. Mm -hmm. It's great that you say because I actually um, the the new insurance I have now um, they do have that yeah um, and I keep forgetting. I'm luckily got touch with I haven't needed it lately but um, it's one of those things that you that you might not need to go to the vet maybe it is just one of those things yeah. but calling at least and explaining sending on nowadays as well you can send a photo digitally they might have be able to just look at the photo go oh it's that you know. We can keep straight and they're really good the services are yeah nice. i must admit my my son's dog they we thought it was kennel cough mm. um but they just sent a video of him how he was coughing and just sent it to the helpline and said you know is this is kennel cough and they just come back yeah just giving some manuka honey and you know that's all he needs really. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah it, no they are they are absolutely great but yeah thank you that's a, a really good point you know, to, when it comes to grooming as well uh any behavioral training issues don't just hope for the best <laughs> and that you know the guy down the road they've been owning dogs for a long time um that knows more than a professional does yeah. and, and know, again there's and, yeah. i'm obviously in a lot of grooming groups but i mean also in some groups where like breed specific groups that have got like a grooming section yeah. and a lot of that is uh if the dog's struggling with grooming it's you know you need you need to show show it to his boss you need to and you don't need to show it to his boss you know mm -hmm. just take a really consent-based approach um yeah some of the advice i've seen even in some of the own you know the the pet the the breed groups mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit upsetting that, that some of the things they're recommending yeah. Yeah. well it, it is isn't it i've seen i've seen a few even some popular charities um yeah, maybe not even uh, directly advocating, but having their uh, we discussed this before, yeah. having their uh, volunteers, if you like, using tools that are not appropriate. Yes. Um, yeah, and yet, yeah. I really appreciate some pe some people just don't know. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's about educating. If we can educate without. Um, criticizing yeah without judgment yeah. that's that's what i was that was the word i was looking for if we, we educate without judgment mm -hmm. then we can change more people's opinion of how to do things with our dogs you know dogs don't want to take the world over if we just give them the time they need the space it's so much easier for both of us because um I mean, when it comes to grooming, I sit there some days and I'm like in fairyland, you know, it's got a lovely dog on the table and it's it's letting me groom it, even though it might not have let a previous groomer groom it. And, it, you know, that you can see that it, I love it when I, well, I don't love a new dog coming in that's really anxious, but I love to see the progress they make and when you get to that point where you can actually do more or less a full oh, groom on them. And they're just sitting there and letting you do it without any panic, any fear. And that's oh, that's, so moving. What, yeah. that's what makes the job worthwhile when you get one of those, when you just want to, well, really what you want to do is dance around the salon, but you know, well, yeah. that's too much. You won't be able <laughs> to get it. be weird, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that will get you a lot of followers on TikTok, though, <laughs> if you were thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I should do a TikTok channel to be quite honest, but I think everybody thinks I've lost. About you dancing in the salon? Not sure about that part, but the rest. <laughs> oh. yeah. And speaking of social media, so if you'd like to follow uh, Sue, so there is a great Facebook group that I'm also part of, and it's called the Taking the Gr with Three R Out of Grooming Dogs. And that is the, it was a very popular Facebook group. Actually. I've got about 16, 16 and a half thousand now. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's and I like I said, I'm part of it and I follow it and I, you know, uh have a little read every now and then. And the the people in there are really lovely. And you have a selection, you have some professionals, you have dog guardians, yeah, no, you have some behaviors, it's a bit of everything. Yeah. There's guardians, there's groomers, there's behaviorist mm -hmm. trainers. Um, Joe Dog, Joe blogs down the road that just yeah. wanted to have a look. Uh, <laughs> anybody, <all> with them. <laughs> anybody and everybody can join as long as they answer the joining questions and they <laughs> they stick to the group ethos. So if um, people of, often post, you know, oh, I've got this dog in, uh, usually get quite a few guardians saying, oh, my dog's really fussy about having his feet done. Mm -hmm. um, if we get any comments of how to solve that, like, you know, stick a muzzle on it or, yeah. you know, restrain it, then that that's, that comment's gone. It gets deleted. Yeah. Uh, so any negative um, advice that doesn't follow the ethos of the group, that's taken off straight away. Or occasionally what we'll do is we'll use that as an opportunity to educate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Because you don't want to leave a comment on there that someone might read and think oh if he's here it means that he's it's okay exactly. I should do it um at the same time you don't you want to 
kind of leave something to that person that has left that comment so that they know, look, I understand that you might have that opinion, but let me show you actually that we can yeah. do better now. Yeah, it's just role. about, you know, saying why we don't um, advocate the use of yeah. that tool or that technique. What's the, um, once upon a time, that's what it was known, you know? Yeah. We didn't know as much about dogs as we do now. No. And, uh, and we, and there was that, that idea of, oh, they're just things that we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's what it is. Years and years ago, that's what it was. Um, but luckily- no, like kids like that, they should be seen and not heard. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, you know what? I, I have, uh, only recently I was talking to someone I think it was a client, I can't quite remember, but we talked about that sentence, right? Kids should be seen and not heard. And I, because the first time I heard is a very English sentence, so there is no translation in the child, which I could translate, but it takes like three hours to translate. But it's, uh, it's, it's something very, very English sentence. And I thought just how old fashioned that is and how it, oh, it really upset me. And I thought, gosh, but that was so true back when and in some places still is very yeah. much the case in yeah. some families. I think particularly for dogs it's you know <laughs> I, I read a post tonight somebody I can't remember who'd written it and she said you know a lot of dogs are um the focus is on training them to to behave mm -hmm. and to be you know sit when told eat when told do everything on cue so they're almost like a robot yeah 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 but you know, we need dogs to be to be dogs. Yeah. It's um, fun, yeah, we we train them in to behave rather than just be. And yes. we don't we're not yeah. And that doesn't mean them. that doesn't mean they're on riot. It mm -hmm. just means you 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 find out a way of living harmoniously. So you both got freedom of choice. Yeah. And I'm, I, And there are compromises, isn't there? There are yeah. Just like you would expect, I would expect some politeness from my child without like breaking who she is. And the same thing goes for my dogs. I want them to be polite, you know, but at the same time, I want them to be them. And yeah. I, I hopefully they are in their craziness. Um, I mean, it's quite strange. My last, my, my youngest, which is the working cocker that keeps making an appearance, <laughs> I have done, and my poodles, to be quite honest, my poodle chic, I've done far less training, formal training with those, those two than I've ever done with any of my other dogs. My other dogs, of course, we know, the sit down, yeah. uh, wait, <laughs> you know. And I've done so little formal training, yet I'd say it out of all the dogs I've ever had, owned, Talis in particular is probably the most biddable you know if I ask him to sit he'll sit straight away although I've not banged that into him it's no but it, I think it's because I'm not asking him to do stuff all the time when I do ask him it's almost like yeah she needs me to do this so I'll do it She's for her <laughs> um and the, and my poodle, she she's just so laid back. You know, she'd just sleep on my knee all day if I let her. But the other, the the interesting thing as well is that um, these Talis and Sheik have both been been brought up from day one with talent and tea touch, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the animal centered education approach. So I'm sure that's influenced them as well because they've they've been encouraged to be calm from the beginning. They've been shown they've been not rewarded when they're calm but they've just been calm to be quite honest <laughs> I guess it's one of those things as well if they were uh, in that em environmental situations where stress is always high and they almost have a known calmness they wouldn't yeah. be able to be calm if you know what I mean instead yeah. And I suppose that, that, that from the beginning that's part of it as well because all my other dogs um I worked at the university when I had more of the dogs so I was employed um I'd already gone into self-employment and grooming when I had the Sheik and Talis so I'm sure that's had a, a an effect on me as well because I'm much calmer than I used to be I'm much more relaxed I'm around a lot more so mm -hmm. I'm sure that's that's had an that effect yeah. as well. yeah. so um tell us uh if there is anything in the in 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 the um in your future any any projects or anything yeah i've got a 
I've got a big project bubbling. Mm. Um, but hopefully I'll be talking about a little bit more, probably in about four to six weeks' time. Nice. Um, that uh, I'm quite excited about. Um, and then there's a couple of side things I'd like to do as well if I get the time. Um, can we can we say that CAD would be one of the ones who have the exclusive? Oh yes, yeah. so, so, as soon as I I I launch launch it, CAD will be one of the first to know about it. Awesome. Uh, and when he's when he's launching, can we have you back on and talk about it some more? Definitely. Nice, nice. <laughs> and that'd be a nice it, Christmas, like a Christmas present. <laughs> yes. And hopefully it will appeal to CAD members. So. Oh. Uh, Yes. So. Fantastic. And one last question. This is the one I asked you before when you went on, when you came on here before, and I always ask to every author. Um, do you have a favorite author or a favorite book that you would recommend people to read or check out? Okay, so I think I, I, I must give this same book last time because this is one of my favorite books. In fact, at one time I got two copies. So I've got one copy at home and one copy in the caravan. Ah. <laughs> it's one of those books that I could read Again, it's a really easy read for, for guardians. You don't have to have any dog behaviour knowledge. It's really easy and understandable. And it's Sarah Fisher's Unlock Your Dog's Potential. Oh, yeah. and it's one of those books I can read over and over again. And I find something different every time. You yeah. can read it in sections rather than having to read the whole book. I, I just really enjoy Sarah's Sarah's work in general. But that book is is one of, one of my favourites. And... Um, I think that she's got a new one coming out, hopefully not too long now, about the Animal Centred Education. Um, oh, I can't, I can't wait for that one. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, think, I think that one will be flying off the shelves. Yeah, 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 for sure. And also a big kiss to Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> we love you so much. Um, gosh, Sue, so thank you so much for you know for coming on, talking about your awesome book. Shall we show you the cover again? I've got it. I'm yes. like, you know. It Actually, Talis is sat on it at the moment. <laughs> keeping it warm, keeping Good it warm. Good boy. There you go. So it's taking the girl. Now, introducing your puppy to gorilla grooming. Now, if any CAD members want to buy um, either taking the girl out of grooming your dog or introducing your dog to your puppy to gorilla grooming, if you're in the UK, you can buy them direct from me at a discounted price. Now, if you are a breeder or a trainer or a groomer that wants to bulk buy them, I'll give you an even bigger discount. So how can we find you? So, <laughs> yes, um, if you go on to into my group, my Facebook group, Taking the Girl Out of Grooming Dogs, you can contact me via the group there. Obviously, there's, uh, I think there's a pin post about the books now you can buy them. But if you want to drop me a PM, um, you can do and or you an, email. an email address I've got an email address it was it's info at happy pause with sue dot co dot uk brilliant you and also what I'm going to do because I will also post then our video on uh, on our YouTube channel I will also make sure that all these details would be on here so you can find uh, uh, find sue and get in touch with sue um, about this great offer thank you so much yeah. what well, um, i'll do then i'll send you um i'll send you some details then you can put how they can pay brilliant. just pay via paypal and how much and then Fantastic. that'd be that'd be yeah so and then just make sure if they're paying me by paypal yeah. they need to be in the uk mm -hmm. um and they need to make sure their address is on the, the PayPal account yes, yes. and post it. If they are overseas and they want a bulk order, then we'll, we can work That's something out. Much, yeah. Charge a bit extra to cover the postage. Because mm. it's buying direct from me will still probably be, if you want a lot of copies, uh, it's going to be cheaper than buying them all off Amazon. So yeah. you can buy it off Amazon, but... Obviously, if you want, if you're a breeder or a trainer or a behaviorist or a groomer and want to buy multiple copies, it's probably going to be cheaper to buy them directly and yeah. then pay the postage extra. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Sue. And uh, and hopefully we'll have you again back at Crafts. Oh, and, yes. uh, because we are going to be a craft in March, guys. 
So we're going to have you back at craft and uh, you can either bring the book if you've already bought it, you can bring your book and so we'll sign it. Or hopefully we'll have some copies there as well to purchase on. Yes, there. yes I, can take, I can bring some books with me. And yeah, if people want me to sign it while, I'm, while yeah. they're there, I'll do that as well. Oh, that's so nice. With a cat pen. Yeah. <laughs> No, I've got a special pen for signing my books. Oh, do you now? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, because well, I launched the, um, my first book was the Taking the Girl Out of Grooming Your Dog. That went, that launched on the 28th of September, mm. which was two weeks after my birthday. My sister had bought me a pen, a, a really nice fountain pen for my birthday. So I keep that for signing books. <laughs> Fine. Oh, well, if your sister got a fountain pen, then fine, you can use that one. <laughs> oh, I can use yours if you insist. <laughs> That's fine. But you bring your own pen. But yes, I should definitely be joining you at Crofts on your stand. Yes, out. and I will make sure that I, you know, I let, I let everyone know when, when you'll be there. Um, but it'd be so great to see you again. And it's been so great to chat to you this evening. So oh, thank you so much. And don't, don't forget to get in touch with Sue. And I'll make sure to give you all the details as well, how to get in touch uh, if you're watching this after anyway, uh, write it down. And uh, Sue, thank you very much and congratulations again on your uh, latest book. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I look forward to seeing you again soon As in person. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. <laughs> bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.